How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure how great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Powerful gifts that God has given us. It not only grows us closer to God, um, it, is, uh, it is also one of the ways that we are encouraged to hold up the needs that are around us to the one God who can do something about them. And I like Paul's prayer to the Colossians at the beginning of his letter to the Colossians, and I want to just walk through this and, and pick out a couple pieces again for us. So I'm going to start at verse 3 of chapter 1 of Colossians. He says, In our prayers we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard, check this out first, we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of your love for all the saints because of the hope that has been laid up before you. Because you know what you've received, the faith of them was heard beyond the city walls and the love that they had for all who had put their faith in Christ. And then he says, we have heard of your hope, of this, you've heard of this hope before in the word of truth. So they were grounded in God's word. They understood what was going on that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, Paul says, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. So the idea here is that 
Paul is praying for them because he's heard of their faithfulness. He's heard of how they are growing in the, their relationship with God. And it's bearing fruit. It's bearing fruit in their own lives from the very day they heard it. And they've comprehended God's grace. I think that's that's our heart, that's our call too. How have we heard the word, the truth in our lives, and how is it bearing fruit in our lives? What's the next step for us for it to continue to bear fruit in our lives? And have we really fully embraced and comprehended the grace of God that's been bestowed upon us by God as a gift? And he says, you learned all this from Epaphras, our fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. And he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. So it wasn't just them. It was someone who was teaching them. Who is teaching you? It doesn't have to be your pastor. It can be and it should be. But don't limit it to your pastor. Where else are you learning? Who else are you getting the faithful teaching from Scripture on? That's my encouragement for you. And he continues in verse 5. For this reason, because of all of this, he says, Now, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you. And it, here's what they're asking. He says, And asking, so he's praying for them and asking God for, that they may be filled with the wisdom of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. In other words, that they would know what God's heart is. What's God's will? In all the things of, of the world so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. That's the goal for all of us, is to live lives fully pleasing of God. And so I say, who are you praying for this prayer? Who are you praying for that they would lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to them, that they would understand God's will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And he says, so that you may bear fruit in every good work and grow strong in your knowledge of God. So live lives worthy of God, fully pleasing of Him, bear fruit and grow in your knowledge of God. Knowledge is not head knowledge, remember that. It's execution knowledge. I know it and I act on it. That's what knowledge truly means when you see that in scripture and then he says may you be be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience he's saying things aren't always going to go great just because you know God so this is about making yourself strong so when the struggles do come into your life you are able to withstand them and endure them with patience. And it says, endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to God, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. So not only are we just supposed to tough it out in the hard times to endure, but because of what we've done pre before those storms get to our lives, we can do it joyfully because of the depth of our relationship and our understanding of who God is and how he is on our side. Those are the kind of prayers that we should be praying. Praying for those around us, praying for our church, praying for God's will to be done in this world. All of that is before us because we have experienced God's grace and we are growing in the knowledge of who and what he is, that we may know his will with all spiritual wisdom and knowledge, Paul says. So what does that say to us? Pray. It means pray. Pray. Pray for the things that, that you know about as you're in prayer, ask God to bring things to your mind to then turn around and hold back up to Him in prayer as well. Those are all the benefits that be are before us for prayer. 
And so I invite you to become a man or a woman of prayer. For it will draw you close to God. And you will have impact in this world in ways you have never fathomed. And so pray. Let me do that now. Lord, thank you that you are a God of, who calls us to yourself and calls us to bring everything in our lives to you so that you might be glorified. And Lord, we might be strengthened and deepened in our faith as a result of that. Lord, let our heart be in sync with your, yours, that our heart might be your heart and the things on your heart would become the things on our heart. Those things that bring joy and those, those things that break your heart. May they bring joy and break our hearts as well. We ask it in your name. Amen. Well, while we're talking about prayer, there's a couple things going on I want you to be aware of. One is this Sunday, so just in two days, we are going to take probably 15 minutes after worship, right after worship, in the worship center, to go down to the front center of the, of the, the worship center and pray for our pastor nominating committee and pray for the pastoral search process. This is things we're going to do um, throughout the next coming months. We'll do some different types of doing of, of prayer as a community. And so we invite you just to come forward as we're going to hold up our PNC and the search and the new pastor that we know God has chosen for us. So join us right after worship um, on this Sunday for that. The other thing I want to let you know about is that Gio and Mogli uh, Sine and their grandson Fabio are going to be with us for about a week or so at the beginning of September. Um, he's going to be speaking in worship on September 5th. And as a result, um, he's going to be in town the week after that. And uh, Pat Nolan is looking for some folks who might like to host the three of them for a day or a couple or whatever works for you. Um, I believe it will be starting on Sunday night, the 5th, I think, of September, running through that Friday night. So if that's something that you would welcome, I mean, they are, they are wonderful to have in your home, um, and they are gracious and they are loving, and you will have an opportunity to be able to spend more time with them and get to know their hearts a little bit. So if you've not done that before, boy, take advantage of it. It's a real gift. And if you want to, contact Pat Nolan, um, and uh, and he will he's coordinating their their uh, schedule and where they're staying. So talk with him, and they will get you uh, scheduled to be able to spend a little bit of time with uh, Gio Magli and their grandson. So take advantage of that as well. So I hope you have a good weekend, folks, and we'll see you on Sunday for worship. God bless everybody. Bye bye now.